just to be just just to be close to you How amazing is that? <laughs> Jump up, turn around, do the hokey pokey and turn down. We call that necromancer spirit out. I'm a prophet. I'm, I'm an apostle. I'm a bishop. I, I just, you know, laugh at some Christians who think they're just so wise. Like they, you are not that smart and you ain't that wise because you ain't that powerful. But I've just met so many Christians, they are such cowards. Anytime warfare arises, they always want to jump on the bandwagon with a bunch of junk and a bunch of foolishness. You understand? Do you not know murder happens with the mouth? You need to understand how God looks at murder. It ain't just physical. It's with the mouth. And you, if you're a part of that, you stop talking about people because you are a murderer with your tongue. Gossip is, is murder. Speaking evil of people is murder. You have to stop doing that because you're going to be judged the same level courts judge people who physically kill people. When you get to heaven, I saw this. I saw Jesus. I saw pastors standing in front of him in heaven and they were walking in front of him and he would judge them. He says, you're a murderer. And some of them, he did not let them into heaven. He sent them to hell. And I'm telling you, there are so many pastors and leaders down in hell for gossiping over the pulpit. I'm telling you, the judgment in the next life is going to be so radical, you have no idea. And you're going, to want, you're going to be the one that pay in the end of your life for it. I'm just telling you, I've been to heaven, I saw it. A lot of Christians are going to be thrown into hell for murder. Stop gossiping. But some of y'all can't understand it in this 21st century because you don't respect order. You think because a man or woman is wrong, you have the right to do all this disrespectful stuff. Anybody who judged God's servants is a punk. That's right. I said that. Every time you speak against a man of God, a woman of God, an anointed person, and you judge them, you are a punk to the devil. That's right. You are wussy to the devil. That's right, I said that. That's what you are. Who are you who are able to say if somebody stand or fall? You, you, you old corrupt creature. You darn filthy rag creature. You wicked hypocrite liar you. And you know you got skeletons in your closet. Maybe we ought to get God to shine the light on your sorry tale. You lying hypocrite. You self-righteous liar. Did you see how everybody saying Hosanna to Jesus one week, then Lucifer, he says, this is your hour in power of darkness. Satan was put into the heart of Judas Iscariot. Everything started, everybody turned. That's why I tell my staff, don't ever get arrogant and think you can't turn. I tell them all the time, because Jesus is working with this ministry personally. This is the highest ark of heaven beside God. Who you think coming? Lucifer himself. Those are the kind of attacks we get here, satanic. They're not just spiritual warfare, it's satanic warfare. There's a difference. I remember a time that the attacks I go through now, those things would have destroyed me years ago. Now I laugh in the face of this stuff. It's like chump change to me. It's just a bunch of junk and hype on the scene. You, you guys have no idea what darkness is and, and how wicked and how powerful. You see, I was delivered over to Satan for seven years by God. That's why it bothers me. I see Christians, they're just so spiritually arrogant. They just think they, they're such on certain levels. They just have no idea how. And those are the kind the devil trick real quick. Because they have no humility. This, this is immature Christians and also weak Christians because they don't understand anything. <laughs> there was a time in 2006 when I was praying and fasting in the church. Jesus walked through the wall. He began telling me, he says, now my father is about to come on earth and work with you in front of the American public and the world. And he would, like he did Moses. Are y'all putting the scriptures up on the screen? Or are y'all being jack legs back there tonight? 
I stay on these young people because they, sometimes they bring, get scrambled and go off on me, you know. These Americans today are disrespectful and wicked because they don't understand authority. Now, I've become an authority in this area because this is what he's had me study for many years. You can't become an authority in an area that you have not mastered. So how can you really say David E. Taylor is wrong about what he's teaching about face to face? That's why I understand who I am. 2,000 years later, after Jesus, I'm raised up. See, I know who I am. Do you know who you are? That's why I'm bold about it. I, I, you know, I'm not arrogant. I'm just bold. So then Jehovah started to talk to me when he came to me in dreams. He says, Adam was not the first man. He talked to me. He says he was the first man in this last set of thousands of years, but not from the beginning. He says, I created other civilizations and they failed me. Especially when I cast Lucifer out, he deceived them too, just like he did Adam and Eve. That's why if you notice, you hardly hear that much about them old civilizations because God ain't quite given that kind of information out. <laughs> you see, when, when Jehovah started teaching me, he says, see, you know, the church is so far behind that the things I'm talking about is so many years, light years ahead of where they are. And uh, you have to, in this generation, help them catch up because they're so far. And if they're going to catch up with the move of God for this generation, you got to teach them the things I'm teaching you. And so he began to teach me about what we call the God Ram. The word God is not a person, it's a title. It's a Ram, it is not a person. Face to face is a Ram, say with me a Ram. All right, being a God is not him, it's, it's not a person, it's a, it's a Ram, it's a title. And it is not the highest Ram. But the 21st century church don't wanna go no further then Happy Meals. Happy Meal. I just call it Happy Meal at McDonald's. <laughs> you know what you give your little children? It's children's food. Happy Meal. Get an action figure, all that, you know. God always raised up a prophet out the 400 year span. Every 2,000 years, but right before, there's a 400 year something goes on. And this is when Jehovah came to me and said, I've raised you up to be a face to face prophet in this generation. I've given you what Moses had. This is America's 400th year of existence. Now I'm raising you up as a face-to-face -face prophet to this nation. The first colony was established in Jamestown, Jamestown in 1606 or 07. America is a 400-year country. Our fathers in this generation, spiritually, ministry-wise, are making big mistakes by putting young prophets up in the national forefront. I don't care how strong their gift is, it is not time for them to be on the front. They, they put up Zachary Timms, put him on the scene, he had a big church, but he wasn't ready for national ministry. But now he hits the national scene so big, so huge. And then all of a sudden, Zachary Timms, he ODs in a, in a hotel on drugs because he couldn't take the pressure of national ministry. You do not give a novice national ministry. And you don't give any preacher a national ministry until after 20 years. And God sent an angel to me in a dream and told me to warn this generation that if you come out before 20 years nationally, you will not make it. What is wrong with our generation? They want a, they want a platform and they want limelight too soon. And I want to warn you young preachers and young prophets. I don't care who you are. I don't care how big your name is. You are puffed up. You have allowed people to puff you up. You're going too fast. It's just being honest, not a bunch of fluff and lies and exaggerated belief systems. Just to be close to you is my desire.